This week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. Head on over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today. Fans, founders, and insiders like you help us keep the Run, Eat, Drink podcast going. And we thank you for your support. Hi, I'm Jeff Galloway, and you are listening to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Hey, welcome to episode 201 of the Runny Drink Podcast. 201! I'm your host, Amy. <sighs> I'm your co-host, Dana. What's wrong? All that, that was, build up. That was like a huge sigh. All that build up to the 200th episode. Are you that, let down now or? Well, now we got 99 more till we get to that nice big even number. Yeah. I, I was going to say I'm really sad because it's not 2001 and we can't do like a whole big space thing. Oh, a space thing or something to do with the artist formerly known as Prince. Why? Why? Oh, no, wait, that's 2000. See, I... I he did a song called 1999. I, uh, yes. You want it on the episode that is number 1999. Well, when we get there, we will try to license that and play it. Okay. Which will never happen. <laughs> what do you mean we're never going to get to 1999? No, we're never going to be able to afford licensing a Prince song. Oh. They control that pretty tightly from what I understand. Okay. Well, it's frowned upon. Uh, Just play it. We can dream big. Let's start over. What? Introduce yourself. <laughs> Welcome to episode 201 of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. My father would have a fit because I'm supposed to say 201, not 200 and one. Oh, because, you know, he's a math teacher. He would know. Yeah. Welcome to the show. <laughs> 201 of the Runny Drink Podcast. That is that is dad approved right there. Dad approved. Nicely done. Hey, everybody. We are actually incredibly excited. I All joking aside, and I was completely <laughs> joking. We, we had that big 200th episode. Yes. We are still kicking around, like, doing a look back. But in the meantime, we it dawned on us. Oh, we could save it because... June is fast approaching. Oh, save it for the five year. Mm -hmm. Okay, wh whatever, whichever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But what we are looking forward to very much is rounding out our coverage this week Indeed. of the Donna Marathon weekend. This is the big race. This <sighs> is the big one that we did, our group. So we are going to be talking about- the big day. Yeah, the big day for us. Yeah. And what, again, we've been talking about the last two episodes with the, yeah. the social shakeout run last week with the 5K. 5K. This rounds it out. And again, for me, this is probably my favorite run that we do. I know. And I agree. Now, granted, there are some new races on our race schedule at runningdrink.net slash run that we haven't done. So we can't really compare them to those races, the, the Donna weekend events, but I can't imagine a deeper connection, a larger community presence and a, a cause and such a, just a fantastic experience with our Runcation Nation. Absolutely. So and we're going to be talking all about that in the run segment of this week's episode. Mm -mm -mm. Um, we are also going to be featuring some fantastic food and beverage from <gasps> a spot out near the Jacksonville beaches that was recommended to us by some friends of ours who are locals. Cause again, we got the inside scoop from people who live in the area. And why are you not going to take that advice? Right. You always want to eat where the locals eat. Mm. 
want to know where the best is according to the people who have lived there and Mike and Andy Sharp know where it's at. They do. They really hooked us up they with uh, yes. some suggestions over the years. This was one of my all-time favorite. We're not going to spoil it. Mm -hmm. So that is coming up on this week's episode. But first, Amy's got some shout outs that people sent us. I'm super excited about this too. You're going to help me with them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. First, I would like to say we, we have seen this race announcer around at different races. We have seen on online how her presence is so it's so exciting and it makes the race experience so much more fun and meaningful to say that we got a shout out from race announcer Fitz 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 Kohler, Kohler. who's half of the team noisy Yes. Uh, race announcer. She is, uh, she's partners with Rudy Novotny mm -hmm. of all kinds of racing and race announcing fame. We've run many a race announced by Rudy. We have. And, and we have Fitz. Missed him. Yes. But Fitz, like you said, her energy, uh, her, own, her own story. And uh, her own story. Yes. Yeah. Super, just energetic, fun, inspiring, and apropos to the weekend. Well, she submitted that she wanted to shout out the more than 250, 250, let's get it, Joe Rolls approved, 250 male and female breast cancer survivors out there on the course for the Donna Marathon weekend, many of whom are still in chemo and other treatments while tackling the weekend's events. And that was Fitz submitting that to us. Yeah. She thinks they deserve a shout out. And she is absolutely right. Correct. hundred percent. It was inspiring and very emotional to see them all out there. And I think it's amazing to have somebody like her reach out and say, these people deserve the shout out. Yeah. She also deserves a shout out. She does. Being a survivor herself. Yes, and going through all of that while traveling the country and announcing race after race weekend and just living her life and with such positivity and what what a spirit. Yeah. What a spirit. So thank you for submitting that shout out. We also, <laughs> speaking of participants, yeah, yeah, we got a shout out from uh, race participants, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And these folks, they weren't part of our little click that was running as a group next year, maybe next year. Next I'm year. hoping next, next year. year, Facebook friend, Judy Gerber wanted to shout out her husband, Dean. Yes. And <laughs> Dean wanted to shout out Judy. Yeah. They wanted to shout out one another. <laughs> For completing the Donna Marathon, and Judy is a 15-year survivor as well. So they did the 26.2. Oh, yeah. And I can remember talking to Dean after the race in the celebration area. In the Runner's Village. Runner's Village area yeah. that, that had the food and the beverage. And just, he stopped us to say hello. It was so sweet and telling us that Judy was finishing up her marathon and was a 15 year survivor. Just what, what a great experience right after we finished our half to run into him. Yes. And to learn about her. Absolutely. So we also want to take a moment to shout out Jessica, Josh, Dawn, Susie, Joanne, and Kelly, mm. who were part of our team yes. that was up there for the Donna Marathon weekend. And we wanted to make sure that we gave them a, a final shout out as we cap off our coverage of the Donna Marathon weekend and recap the last of our races for that weekend experience. Kelly and Jessica... In spite of those conditions, mm. uh, much like uh, Judy and Dean, yes, crushed the twenty six point two. It was what a what weather conditions to push through, and they did it so well. And 
Dawn was there cheering us on as we headed to the finish line. Oh. After she finished. Yes. And her husband was right there with her mm-hmm. as well, which was great. Susie. Susie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Susie and Joanne, they finished and then came back to cheer on Jessica and Kelly and snap photos of them after they finished their half marathon. It was fantastic. And, and I, <sighs> What an experience to be with somebody finishing their first ever, his first ever half marathon. Yeah. Josh, patron yeah. of the show. Yeah. Josh had a really special weekend. Josh, not only was this his first half marathon, he also ran his first ever 5K. Yeah. And did it not once, but twice because he did the social shakeout run. Mm hmm. And that's his first race challenge. Bam. Ever. It was huge. This was a huge weekend for him. And for us to be able to go back out onto the course and accompany Josh across the finish line and be greeted by executive director of the Donna Foundation herself, a guest of the show, friend of the show. Boston Marathon qualifier. Just kind of a big deal. Big deal. Amanda Napolitano. Fantastic. It was so great. I think I like, you know, how sometimes in the movies you see people who just they go in for a hug and then they hug just too long. It was me. (laughs) It was me after we took the photo with Amanda. After we crossed the finish line with Josh, I was just so filled with emotion and happiness and joy at that experience. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then uh, all, we also had Fitz right there, too, announcing yeah. us in. Yeah. Uh, again, just did, a, she, did she talk about your kilt, too? Uh, she did. Yeah. Yes, she she did make mention of the kilt. Love but it. it was great. And we are just so thankful that we got to, to share this time mm-hmm. with our people yeah. and with the newest, some of the newest members of the Runcation Nation. Yeah. Just having this opportunity was great. And we are... Loving the fact that you guys reached out to us so that we could shout you out here on the show. And if you would like a shout out for somebody else that you love on the show or shout out for yourself, maybe you did something that you'd like to get a little recognition for in your running, eating and drinking your accomplishment, Mm -hmm. exploration and indulgence. Let us know. Send us an email to info at runnydrink.net. That's info at runnydrink.net. Or call and leave us a message. 941 677-2733. That's 941-677-2733. You could shout out somebody on the show. You could hear your own voice if you email us a little voice memo or leave us a voicemail at that number to say congratulations or way to go or I'm proud of this or... Yeah. Something you accomplished yourself. Make yourself runny drink podcast famous. Let's talk running. Okay. This weekend for me is amazing from beginning to end. It starts with the social shakeout run and it mm. culminates for us in the half marathon. Yes. However, there are multiple races going on. You have the social shakeout, which is an informal event. Mm-hmm. At the formal event, you have the 5K the half marathon, Mm -hmm. the full marathon, and an ultra. That starts on Saturday and And continues into Sunday. So there are distances for everyone. There are. And and like Fitz said in her shout out, Mm. the fact that you're out there running with people who are at all stages of the cancer journey, whether they are in it themselves or yeah. they're in it for somebody else yeah. is so moving and so really powerful, is. especially for us. Everybody knows who's been listening to the show. We lost my mother in 2016 to stage four metastatic breast cancer. For me to be out there, it's a whirlwind or a roller coaster of emotion. Yeah. But it is, I think, one of the most enjoyable race courses that you can possibly do. And Last year, this race went virtual. Oh, yes. And that was a kind of a huge blow. This is a a one that we look forward to. We we kind of bank on it because we want that connection. We want Mm -hmm. to be able to have that time to do something in memory of my mother. And we didn't get the opportunity to do it in person. 
So when we heard that it was coming back, we were so excited. Oh, yeah. And the fact that the Runcation Nation came together and so many of you decided to come and meet up with us and run was just, Mm -hmm. I think, one of the best memories I I have. It was so much fun and just an incredible Incredible weekend. And, and those who couldn't but really wanted to be there running virtually was also so sweet and so wonderful to see people when we would check in from live chats on the course that day. So how can we talk about this course? This course is fast. This course is flat, really flat, even flatter than the first year we ever did did this race. Yeah. The very first year that we did this race, it incorporated a very large bridge mm-hmm. at the next to last, or at the, really at the last mile of the race, you basically went over mm. a bridge, you went on the off ramp and then into the parking lot of the Mayo clinic where it ended. They have since moved the race course a couple of times. And this year was a new course. They did shift it, mm-hmm. uh, um, mile or two up the road, but still flat for the start. Yes. Still fast. S- Theoretically, I mean, when you say fast, I'm going to say fast asterisk. And we're going to have a reason for that in a minute. We are not in it for speed. No. But I'm saying runners of all abilities can come out to this course for enjoyment, to get the most of their race entry fee like we do, or to get out there and get a goal that they have been working so hard for, like qualifying for Boston. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. All kinds of runners are drawn to this course. Yes. Charity runners, like Serious, casual runners, you name it. Mm -hmm. And this course does take you through, let's see, Neptune Beach, Jacksonville Beach, Ponte Vedra, Mm -hmm. Atlantic Beach. Yeah. So it's beach town, it's it's small beach towns, all paved roads. This course in years past has taken runners out onto the sand as I have we heard. never did that though. We never got to do it. We never did that, but and I'm so glad because it's like training for hills in my opinion. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to do that. Slowly and, uh, and carefully. And I might need to remove my shoes. Yes. Depending on tidal shifts or whatever. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the idea the idea is that they try to get you as close to the beach as possible. And in this year's course, we were in many parts of the race course, literally on the street closest to the Atlantic Ocean. The only thing between yeah. us and the Atlantic was maybe a house. Yeah, you could look to your right, and there it was. Yes. You could see the ocean. You could see the waves. You could see the beautiful sky and just fantastic scenery. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. I think you're, you've conflated two days here. Oh, I'm so sorry. On the race day of the half marathon, there was no beautiful sky. Well, I so mean, let's get this, let's get this big elephant in the room out. Okay. The weather, the ding, weather, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> this year's race had a real issue with weather the night before oh, Saturday man. night, a cold front came through. Mm. And during that time, that line of storms comes through. It was howling outside. Heavy wind, heavy rain. I don't know about lightning overnight. Thankfully, no lightning the next day. However, during the race course, we were looking at about 20 mile an hour sustained winds with gusts over up to 40 miles an hour is what we were looking at on the race course. And Mm. that was pretty unrelenting. And... At times, it was still a beautiful sky, though. Beautiful gray sky. Well, yeah. <laughs> Beaches are beautiful. As long as you're not in that water. Right. Yeah. This was not a pretty day I know. for running. I know. I, I, I like how you're trying. Now, at least the, the day before, was not- it was. The day before, it was beautiful. Blue skies, sure. uh, great temperature, the whole nine yards. But at the- least the sun wasn't beating down on us. And it wasn't midday in June, and it was like 90% humidity. That's true. It was 100% humidity on this day because it was raining. Well, you know. And it was 50 degrees out. It was cold. Yes. It was not humid and hot. No. I'm with you. Okay. I'm just trying to paint this picture for everyone. Because 
this would have been a factor for a lot of people maybe looking to come this year for a PR. The the weather was challenging. Yes. It was a swing in temperatures and wind and rain, rain. but we overcame it, as did everybody in the Runcation Nation. We did. And let, here's an, one, we could put this in the shout outs, but I think it's appropriate to do it now. I want to shout out the people that live in the Jacksonville beaches who came out and supported the runners. Because there you go. We have talked about this over the years. What is your favorite part about the Donna? What's your favorite thing about it? Favorite thing about it would be the neighborhood support. Exactly. And what do you the mean na- by that? The neighborhood support. You are, you cross that start line and maybe not even a quarter mile in, there are people at their beach houses or in their neighborhoods, they come out in front of their houses. They set up tables. They have signs that say you can do it. And thank you for running. And we're glad you're here and we love you. And thank you for supporting the Donna foundation. They deck out their lawns with pink balloons and flamingos and flamingos and Betty White this year. And <laughs> there are 12 uh, signs of Betty White's face that says, Here's a yeah, dozen red roses, uh, or Betty White in a red dress. Dozen red roses. Yeah. That was cute. Oh, and they have a lot of them have mimosas and Bloody Marys and chocolate chip cookies and muffins and cakes and donuts and jello shots and you name it and they have it and uh, breakfast burritos. And the, again, the decoration in some of these houses is absolutely out of control. Banners, uh, streamers. Some neighborhoods uh, hire a DJ. Yeah. That's your, one of your favorite aspects of it. Mine too. And I was afraid that the weather oh, was going to curtail all that. I was afraid that the weather that all the challenges we've overcome in the last two years to get here would deter people. I was so afraid of that, but it didn't. No. It did not. Not at all. People were out there. People decorated. People had treats. People had music. Music. The the police officers who were providing a safe course for us, they – they were right there with those neighbors cheering us on and making sure everybody was safe Yeah, and having such fun. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Yes, we've seen it where it had more than what we experienced this year. However, sure, sure. F- given the, the inclement weather. Yeah. I think that I expected it to be much less than what we got. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. It was a full Donna experience. So enjoyable. The neighborhoods, like you said, the decorations were fantastic. Sometimes they were funny. Sometimes they were inspirational. Sometimes Mm. they were a little sad, tugging on your heartstrings. And getting to go and experience all that with people on the course who are running a memorial, running because they're in treatment, running because they're a survivor, whatever the case may be. Running just after a diagnosis. Which did happen. Mm-hmm. So we we got to experience that, and our Runcation Nation members got to experience it, and it wasn't a lesser experience in any way, shape, or form. Everybody in the group came away and said this was fantastic, and I was so glad to hear that. Like, you can't control the weather, and they knew it, but... The other elements of the experience made it worth it. Oh, yeah. For everybody, and everybody said so. I just, it makes me so happy. And, and hey, a shout out to the volunteers at the water stops. Yes. Because I know they were struggling to get people. And, and they were asking up to the very last minute, as I yeah. recall. Yeah. And everybody came out. In full force to volunteer. There were people, they were so energetic and happy and motivating and and cheering random strangers on like us. Mm -hmm. And it was so great to see that the support, the on-course support was in no way lacking. 
No. There was never a time where I was like, man, they could really use a, a water stop. No. Or I could, there may have been a time where I could have used a, a porta potty a little sooner. <laughs> but other than that, it the encore support was great. And that wasn't because of the encore supports, because I had a lot of water. The And there were porta potties. Oh, the, and there were plenty. Yeah. It was just that I had a lot of water. Of so course. That, that's the only thing. And it wasn't, yeah. it, there were plenty of porta potties we along the course. We wanted to be hydrated. We did. We did not want to have heat sickness. <laughs> Little did we know the weather would. <laughs> Little did we know. So I, the experience and the, the course was similar to years past, mm-hmm. not exactly the same. No. But I think in large part, very similar. Yes. Mostly the same. Mostly, yeah. I think the on-course experience overall was inc- incredibly festive the jokes were flying about having to run in that kind of weather as far as the strategy went for tackling it well i was just wanting to soak it up as long as possible even though the weather was not what we wanted i wanted to embrace the whole experience as much as possible and stop and talk like Right before we even hit mile one, we ran into a founder of the race, Edith. Dr. Edith Perez. Edith Perez. And got a kind photo a with deal. her. And got an opportunity to say to her, thank you for putting this race together with Donna and Jeff. Yes. And then we got to, uh, Jeff introduced the show today. We got to run a little bit of the course with Jeff. and Well, you know, we were behind him. He ran by us. Yeah. We were there Pretty close together for at least a little bit, at least a half mile. We're right there with him and he's, yeah. you know, doing really well, which is great to see, it you was know, great. on his comeback from his heart attack last year yes. and all of our Runcation Nation, fellow Runcation Nation, our, our members were out there and doing their races in, in their way. Oh, we got to see Barb Galloway right before we started even. Oh yeah. Yeah. In the corral. And talk to her and. And she said, we'll see how this weather goes. And, and and you're right. Everybody had their own. We started out together, but everybody had their own race to run. Yeah. Everybody had a different strategy they wanted to take. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that depended on whether it was fitness level, recency of training, whatever the case may distance be. Distance they had Total to cover. Total distance they had to cover. And adapting how you trained to the course conditions. Mm. And it ended up being just phenomenal. We decided we were going to get as many photos, videos, stop out and talk with people. We took it fairly slow along the whole course. I think that we were done right at four hours. Oh, I think we were a little over. I think we were like 4.15, something like that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because we were just literally everybody that was out there were grabbing photos and videos and just having a great time. And the dirty secret is, it's not a dirty secret, but the secret is the half marathon course and the marathon course shared. It's shared. So what that means is if you're doing the half marathon, you have just as long as the marathoners do. So you don't have to be afraid. Right. You don't have to fear not finishing or being picked up on the course. It's not that kind of course. No, no. You're, you, there are sections where they may want to get you off the road and onto a sidewalk. Sure. And then sections where there's one section where they had to cross a road mm-hmm. and they were doing a little traffic control and ushering people along pretty mm-hmm. quickly at that point. Yeah. But other than that, it was, it really is just, you've got all the time. Uh, to do it and for us this weekend was not about even going for time Mm -mm. it was purely about getting and soaking it all in doing the Mm -hmm. the interviews and photos and just uh. we had a new friend that was with us on the course for quite some time and we had a couple of galloway pacers with us yes susan who is in charge of jeff's Jeff Galloway's e-coaching program and and she com- communicates with us whenever we sign up for it. Mm-hmm. She was there uh, with the 430 pace group, just walking and making sure that everybody was okay. And they, and Kim Duncan, mm-hmm. we met her and did close to the whole entire race with her. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it was just amazing to meet new friends. She works in, in a running shop and she encouraged us to come to other races in her area of the country in the Carolinas to be. Don't threaten me with a good time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to support breast cancer research and awareness and uh, supporting those who are fighting as well up in her neck of the woods. So it, it was a, a great time on the course. Hydration was never an issue. Nutrition was never an issue. Porta potty security motivation, just when you need it, the finish line experience the finish line experience, where they moved it to, I, I think, and, and I understand now why they did the move that they did, where they put it, it ends up being an outdoor amphitheater or outdoor stage. Mm -hmm. And it's right on the beach. It's, it's right great. on the beach. And, the, and they had more of an area to set up their the post-race beverages. And they had, they had soup there. They had food they get they did and we didn't partake in no. that but the post race or the runner's village at the post race party always has great food they had music entertainment mm -hmm. you know they're giving out beverages and free beer and just you're having a, a phenomenal time i do wish for the sake of people wanting to maybe sit down and enjoy that a little more that the weather would have broken yeah. And and giving us a break, it just never did. It, that it, wind got worse. It was unrelenting. After we finished, and, after we finished. and the temperature dropped yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So it was getting really chilly. And again, I know our northern friends are laughing when they hear that. But they're like, when suck you're, it up, Buttercup. When you're cold and that wind is constant, like that wind chill, that yeah. gets to you after a while. Especially if you're running, because you start giving mm -hmm. giving up all your body heat. So it it yeah. made it pretty uncomfortable but you could go there at the end get a beverage get some warm comfort food yeah. and cheer people on Fitz was there the entire time mm -hmm. shouting people out and you know announcing them in what a great experience the whole thing from beginning to end and like I said there was nothing like finishing with you and then going back and finding Josh and being with him as he crossed the finish line. Oh, yeah. So proud of him. Right. Uh, just what a awesome moment. Mm. And right there with Amanda Napolitano. And Josh actually had on his cell phone had one of our friends of the Trip. show, also Trip Billy. She's She always jumps in on our live chats over on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And she was talking him in. And he did an amazing job. And, Sometimes and you need that. Sometimes you need... A friendly That's, voice. That friendly voice, that motivation, that there are, there are sometimes you got to do something on your own, but then you need a little extra help to get to the finish. And we're so glad that she was there. Absolutely. For him. And hopefully we can get her to come out to one of our race events. I hope so. I hope so. If the experience that we have described is not enough for everybody who could not be there this year and for those who were hoping return next year mm -hmm. the bling is amazing the donna does an amazing job with their medals mm -hmm. i even enjoy the 5k medal it's yeah. it's smaller it doesn't have quite all the flourishes of some of the big events but it's hefty it's their little logo it's the their signature of the whole event. It is. It's the running cancer, breast cancer awareness ribbon. It's so cute. And their ribbon is pink with their logo. This year's medal, they change these from year to year. And, and I thought I would love last year's and, and be sad to see the design go away because it was February 14th. It was Valentine's Day. It was the 14th year last year. And it was a heart with their signature dolphin. And this... I just love this new one. They did an amazing job with this one as well. This one has one of my favorite features, which is the stained glass so kind of thing. Cool. And it's got uh, two leaping dolphins over their their 15 years of Donna mm. uh, logo. 
uh, it yeah. says half marathon and like a yellow with with glitter. It's got the date engraved and the the stained glass is basically like a couple of palm trees and clouds in metal. Mm. And then the the part behind the clouds and behind the trees is like yellow stained glass. And it is so pretty. And the ribbon is color matched to yellow. To that kind to the of yellow. to that kind of stained glass. And oh. it's just so gorgeous. And the challenge metal had its signature shape. Oh, the booby and trap challenge, booby, which is the booby trap. Which explain is, that to everybody because so not everybody knows. If you're new to our show, the Donna Marathon Weekend has a challenge event. You can sign up for the 5K, or this year because it was the 15th year of Donna, you could do on Saturday either the 5K or the 15K relay, which is a team of three. 5K, 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 and you tag each other out. And then on Sunday, you could either finish your ultra, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you could do the 5K and then start to, I don't know, if, is this the ultra qualify? I'm not sure. but It ought to. Yeah. But you could sign up for one of the Saturday events. And then Sunday, you could do the marathon or the half marathon. And then when you cross the finish line, because you completed both events, you get the booby trap challenge medal, which is these shells, these signature shells. It almost looks like the top of an aerial mermaid costume, right? Like a bikini, like a bikini shop. Yeah. And two races, two days, 2022 finisher. And it has Donna with a signature running ribbon as the O in the word Donna. And uh, it says booby trap. And it's green this year. Every year they have a different color. And in years past, it's been pink or orange or blue with glitter. And this one is just got the two tones of green, the lighter green and the darker green for the out, shells outlining the shells. Yeah. And I just love that. And then the ribbon is a combination of the it looks purple. Yeah, it's like purple, like the text. And then green, going into green as the white text, the 15 years of Donna logo is, is there. And it was, it's just, it's great. It, it's a, I think they always do a great job and I can't wait to see what they do next year. Agreed. I, this is a incredibly colorful collection of metals and it, it, when you get done running it, of course you got that great accomplishment that you feel mm. you're supported an amazing charity. You also have really killer bling. This is going to look great on your metal hanger. It is. And let's see what they do next year for the sweet 16. Oh, that's I see what you're doing yeah. there. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm very excited. This is going to be one that we go to, I think, every year, as yeah. long as they're, as long as they're having it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking very forward to what they're going to be bringing to us. Uh, we are going to have links in the show notes to the Donna Marathon Weekend. You can't sign up just yet for next year, nope. I don't think. In normal years past, uh, the normal kickoff is usually around May. I don't know if that's going to be the case this year, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. But in the meantime, let's talk food because oh. we did all this running. We did. You got to do some eating. Ooh. You got to carb up. You got to recover. You got to have post-race recovery protein. Mm -hmm. We got an amazing uh, recommendation from our friends, Mike and Andy Sharp, who are a couple mm -hmm. of doctors there at the Mayo Clinic who are big deals in and of themselves. Andy's usually a consistent a top placer at the Donna. I believe she's nursing an injury this year and is saving her herself for Boston. Yes, trying to recall. recover for that, trying to heal for that. She, We saw her before the races over the Donna Marathon weekend on that Sunday before the races, and she may or may not have given us a little bottle of fireball to celebrate <laughs> to, with later on the course so. to keep us warm to it's for medicinal warm. purposes and yes. if a doctor's giving it to you you have to take it it's take medicine it. it's medicine but the one of the best things she gave us though was a recommendation for a little spot on jacksonville beach mm. called the burrito gallery the burrito gallery and let me tell you their food is a work of art a work of art <laughs> yeah. 
I see what you did there. Uh huh. This place caught my eye actually, even before she recommended it. When we were driving really? out there, I happened to see it. I love sugar skulls. Those painted skulls. Uh, I, I just think they're so visually appealing and cool. And that is their logo. Yeah. At Burrito Gallery. Mm. And it caught my eye, but when she said it, I'm like, oh, I know the place. I, I saw the place you're talking about, and I can't wait to get there. But <sighs> this is a, an interesting place to me. Yeah. When you hear the, the, the phrase fast, fresh concept, it's typically counter service. Yeah. Maybe they'll bring it to your table after you order at the counter. Yeah. So that's different. We walked in. This is a combination. And this is a, yeah, that's a what, weird combination. that was what I was going to get at. It works. Totally. Yeah. The, the space was huge and really cool. They did a great job. It looks like reclaimed wood on the ceiling. They've got you know, their logo up and it's just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But you looked off to the left and there's a big rectangular bar. Oh yeah. And if you want traditional table service, quote unquote, mm -hmm. you don't sit at a table, you go sit at the bar. If you want to sit at a table, you put your order in at the counter yeah, and then they bring it to your table. I've never seen anything like that. And there's an open kitchen there in the restaurant. So you can see everything being made, which looks mouth watering. And oh. everything's fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> mouth watering and my mouth is watering as we're talking about it. And Hey, there are a couple of people in this episode named Claudia and our server is one of them. The one who I say server, the one who took our order at the counter and then checked in on us at the table. Yes. Even though it was counter service esque. Mm -hmm. She was still checking in on us and making sure everything was okay. Just like Claudia at the end of the half marathon gave us a breakfast burrito and a pink beverage <laughs> to get the last mile. Because they live, they live on at like mile 11 or 12 and they're like next year, it's going to be bigger. Yeah. So two different Claudia, two different Claudia, two different Claudia's, but <laughs> this Claudia here at the burrito gallery, mm, she was so sweet and so knowledgeable about the menu. And they have basically, they have burritos, tacos, and bowls. You could do your item as a bowl. So think a concept similar to a Moe's or similar to a Chipotle in that respect. But elevated. But exactly. Elevated. Elevated. Yeah. And this totally worked. I ended up going with a burrito. I was hungry. Yes, you did. And I was so close to, but the fact that they had tacos and bowls, I felt like I had to branch out. I ended up doing a chorizo and potato burrito Oof. with fajita style veggies. Oh, they were so good. <laughs> you could tell I had a bite. Come on, we share. Yeah. Yeah. This thing was crazy. Oh. It, it is their Cali chorizo is what they call it. And it has fried potatoes, ground chorizo, onions, green peppers, salsa, their queso fresco, and some avocado. Oh, that, that uh, the avocado makes it Cali, right? Yes. Is yes. That, that and that, 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 that instantly it? makes it healthy. Also oh. for never mind the fact that you've yeah. got chorizo and, and queso in there. The calories don't count. No. Calories really don't the count. Avocado so I, literally yeah. cancels it all out. Mm -hmm. I am a sucker for this combination. I anytime I see something that's chorizo and potato, it's classic. One of our local food trucks here, Death by Taco Two Three Nine. They yeah. they do a, a taco called For Whom the Bell Tolls. Mm -hmm. Exact same flavor profile. So good. Oh my. I love the combination of fried potatoes where you have. Like a California burrito often has French fries. These were more, yeah, like more like home fries. Oh, what it seemed like. But to me. that great combination of that crispy exterior with the creamy inside of the potato. Oh. And then you get that smokiness uh -huh. from the spice in the chorizo. And chorizo is typically a pork sausage that's heavily spiced with things like uh, paprika, a little bit of, sometimes a little bit of cayenne. Okay. And, so. and typically smoked paprika, not sweet. 
So you end up getting a very smoky flavor. Okay, but how high is the spice level? Because you mentioned Death by Taco 239, and their chorizo is it like Skylar does a spicy chorizo. He does. It has um, some bite. It Did does. this? No. This the, they instead of leaning into the heat the in the from the spice, they leaned into the smokiness. The warmth. And the warmth. Exactly. Mm. So this was not one that really built any heat as you ate it. It yeah. was very just incredibly flavorful. I also liked the fact that they added in some other things. The I, I love fajitas i know you so t- I. you typically order them more often oh. than i do but i love fajitas i love that combination of peppers and onions because f- when they're thick cut and yeah. they're done right they still have a little bit of al dente-ness to them but they're soft but they're softer yeah exactly and you know they're house salsa and and queso fresco mm. so you're talking about like a feta consistency kind of cheese but not as salty right. it's a little bit salty but it's not as salty or as tangy as feta mm. and just what a great combination and of course avocado for that extra bit of creaminess oh yeah and cooling mm. absolutely spot on <sighs> that burrito was killer <laughs> yes, it was. I, ha- I had a bite. I know I asked you about the level of spice, but. You want me to explain it? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Teamwork. Everybody has to know. It's It was so good. <laughs> Sorry. I. No, I was going to say, however, as much as I liked mine, looking at yours, when yours showed up, I was like, oh, I ordered wrong. You didn't, though. I didn't. You did not. But yours looked like I did. I was just able to sample more of the menu this way to be able to bring to our Runcation Nation the reasons, all of the reasons besides the service that we got from Claudia, that they need to come to the Burrito Gallery. I got tacos, and I did three different ones. I was able to do three different ones. The brisket taco which was braised brisket, tomato, queso fresco, and the green, uh, the burrito gallery green salsa. Mm -hmm. And I got the honey sriracha, which was fried golf shrimp, slaw, honey sriracha sauce. And then finally, my favorite of the three, and that's saying something because they were all amazing. What was the birria? Did I say it right? Birria, birria. Birria, birria, birria. Tomato, tomato. Birria, which was a grilled tortilla, brisket, chihuahua cheese. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay. No, you would say it differently. And a side of broth. Mm. The birria tacos are basically the Mexican equivalent of a French dip. Yeah. They're amazing. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. So the brisket, the braised, the, the brisket was tender and the tomato just gave like an acid and the queso fresco added that kind of saltiness, the cheesiness that you need in in a taco like that. And just it, mm. it's queso fresco is a, it's like a crumbly mozzarella. And they were so good. uh, It it just, yeah, it was quite good, but as good as that was. And it, it was pulled brisket, not sliced. Right. As it was pulled. And I like, when I think of sliced brisket, I think of barbecue and I like it sliced for barbecue, but I like it shredded in the taco. That's just me. You could fight me on it. Info at runnydrink.net. Let me know. But as as good as that was, it just kept getting better when I got to the honey sriracha shrimp. The shrimp were huge. Yes, they were. They were huge. And those are probably U6 or U8 shrimp. I, probably. They were they were big and hearty. And it was the breading was so light. It was almost like a tempura breading. And Amy, let me have a bite of each of her tacos. I love the fact. Okay. Sharing is caring. Shrimp are a great vehicle for everything, but if you do them wrong, they can be a detractor from the dish. If you well, overcook them and yeah. they're chewy. Yeah. 
they the cook that they did on these perfect. it was it was the slaw the slaw was just that crunchy element that you need and the honey sriracha was not really i got more honey than i got sriracha from it but i think it was just like a it was like a balanced Sauce. It wasn't. Let's blow your doors off no. with heat. No, I didn't think so either. And sriracha is never that way anyway. It's like a. It's like a smokier. It's got a little bit of a bite, but it's not going to. It's it's certainly typically thicker than like a typical hot sauce, like a mm-hmm. Tabasco. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, a little smokiness, like you said. Yeah, it's I, not going to destroy your palate. And that with honey. Oh, mm-hmm. and again, shrimp are Balance. a great vehicle for Balance. those kinds yeah. of sauces. The birria, oh, the grilled tortilla. It okay. was. I almost chubby. second guessed you on this one. Why? Because you already had a brisket taco, and so, I'm like, you're gonna be like, it's brisket and then more brisket. But these, those this two from tacos. From a man who knows that I love beef. But I thought they were gonna be very similar. But they weren't. Not in the slightest. No, the taco itself. The it's not just hey, I waved it by the grill. It was charred and you could see the the dark marks. It's almost like coal fired pizza looking. Ooh, yeah. Kind of in that taco. Danny agrees. And, and Danny agrees that it, this was oh god, it's so hard to say that this was the best of the trio because they were amazing. But of the two beef offerings, I think this was my favorite. And maybe that's not fair because this had Ah, oh, ah, oh, the melty cheese. That Chihuahua cheese. Oh. Totally different consistency and flavor than the queso fresco. And it had the grilled onions and the, the broth. The broth was so mm, rich and unctuous and just. Had some tartness, some acid so to it. Slightly salty. <laughs> slightly acidic and when you dip the whole entire you got to dip the whole entire taco in it and it's just like and i know that there are different strategies just like with a french dip there are some people who like to immerse like just totally dunk their sandwich with a french dip i dipping the bite you're about to take is the way to go with this. Oh, you mean like people who, who pour their, the entire thing of au jus mm-hmm. on top of their sandwich. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. Because I then it falls apart and I feel then it's like a knife and forker. I just, yeah. And I wanted to hold the taco and the taco was very substantial and held up to the, the dunking. Yes. And it was just, it rehydrated the beef from the cooking process and just made that brisket. So delicious. Not to say that the brisket was dry. No, no, but you, but it goes through the cooking process on the grill. Yeah. You're not, it's not going to be as if it's in soup or just dripping. It, it gave it a a level of liquid and then the cheese and the onions and the bite and crunchiness of the taco. It just all worked. And I could have had three of those and been happy. So that's all I'm saying. And we could have stopped there, but we didn't. Because why? Because again, because Amy always wants dessert and Dana never says he's going to have any. He's like, ah, no, I'm not going to have any, but we all had some. And we ended up getting churros. Oh, not any churros. Caramel filled churros. (laughs) Okay. Okay. They were I, I've filled. never seen that. They were dusted with the sugar and deep fried, but they had caramel in the middle. And there was one for each of us. <sighs> What'd you think? It was so good. It yeah. did not need any side of dipping sauce. It didn't come with a side of dipping sauce. It didn't need it. It had its own built right in. Inside. <laughs> Inside. It was the perfect little package and dessert. It was amazing. It really was. And I, I, I like a churro occasionally and this was perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, 
again, we've got nothing bad to say about this place other than we only had one meal here. Right. And I would have gone back. We are looking forward to potentially going back here in the not too distant future and getting some other dishes from them. They do a fresh catch for their fish tacos and that varies from day to day. They will also do your a fish burrito, which I've never seen mm. anywhere. And they also do uh, surf and turf, uh, mm. you know, taco or burrito. They have oh. a, a number of, of little mm. specialties. But what we're about to talk about further elevates this place because we mentioned they have a bar. Oh, yeah. But they also do craft cocktails. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. But before we go on, we <laughs> do want to take just a second to say thank you to all of our patrons and to welcome our newest patron of the show. You heard us mention him earlier, Dean Gerber. Yes, he submitted a shout out and he became our newest insider tonight as tonight. of the recording of the show. We were literally sitting down to record when we got the notice that Dean signed up and Dean, we cannot thank you enough for becoming an insider for the show. Thank you so much for your support. And you and Judy inspired us at Donna and we hope to see you at another race really soon. Listen, we've got the new levels up. We've talked about them long enough. They are up. If you go to patreon.com slash run, eight, drink podcast or on Podbean, and you click that little button, you can check out those new levels. We have the originals, fans, founders, and insiders. We also have accomplish, explore, and indulge mm. available for you to check out. Yes. And some of the levels have perks like producer credits and per, uh, production meetings with us swag like exclusive business cards behind the scenes footage and more so much more our show will always be free but if you want more you want to support the show become a patron at patreon.com slash runny drink podcast or right in the podbean ecosystem in the podbean app at the top corner if you just tap on the rewards you can learn all about the same exact levels there Thank you guys so much for all of your support and the many ways you support us. And we cannot wait to continue bringing you the Runny Drink podcast for years to come. So you teased the drinks. I did. You did. I had, a, I had that, that, that professional level segue there. I see that. I was shocked that they did craft cocktails at a fast, fresh concept. They had local beer you could, and then some widely distributed beer that you could certainly indulge in. Tacos and beer, perfect companions, but they have their own cocktails. And I couldn't help but go for my old standby. You're a huge fan of mezcal. Well, I'm a fan of mezcal. Yeah. I'm a fan of old fashioned. Yes. They make a mezcal old fashioned. So it all comes together for it, you. It is two great tastes that taste great together. An old fashioned is typically a brown liquor, like a bourbon or a rye. Mm -hmm. It is typically, there's bitters, a little bit of sugar, muddling of cherries. Yeah. An orange and your spirit. And then some people will top it with a little bit of seltzer for sparkle. You don't have to do that. So this cocktail incorporates everything that I love. So they use Noble Coyote Mezcal, which I've not had on its own. Mm. Milagro Reposado. Now that's a tequila. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, so you're getting both. For the, the sugar component... They are using, instead of sugar or simple syrup, they're using agave nectar. Also unique. I like agave nectar. Agave nectar on its own is like honey, but it has almost this flavor of marshmallow to it. Interesting that you describe it that way. And it's just a really unique flavor. And then for the bitters component, they used rhubarb bitters. And That's I've, also I don't, different. I don't know that I've ever had it before. Yeah. And a rhubarb is the, if you've not had it, it's typically, you'll see it used in desserts. It looks like red celery. It has to be cooked to be eaten safely. It is a, 
a red celery is the best way I could describe it, but it tends to have a tart component to it, but they, they use that in the bitters. So you got this wonderful smokiness from the mezcal from the Milagro Reposado tequila. You're getting a kind of a, a mellow. I think they probably put that in there a for a little bit of horsepower and B to mellow. <laughs> Mellow the smokiness out a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's true. And maybe give it a little bit of a little more of that agave flavor that you're going to get from the agave nectar. Good point. The agave nectar, of course, gave it a nice sweetness. And that rhubarb bitters didn't really impart tartness per se, but it had a <sighs> floral's not the right word. Maybe like like a wafting or the, a little bit of the scent after scent of strawberries. Mm-hmm. Uh, rhubarb is often accompanies, you like know. Like a strawberry rhubarb pie. Strawberry rhubarb pie or mm-hmm. cherry. I like that. I, I just thought this was such a great sipping cocktail. And you just couldn't beat it. This was perfect to go with what I had. Mm-hmm. And such a juxtaposition i did not expect to get a really nicely done craft cocktail at a fast fresh concept restaurant i got a nicely done cocktail yeah you did as well oh my i went the margarita route and it was served in a rocks glass very much like an old-fashioned would be the koa is what they called it koa koa c-o-a mm-hmm and it had Patron Roca Silver, and you know how I feel about Patron, Patron Citronge, fresh lime juice, and agave. That's a very simple recipe. It's very simple, but the ingredients were used, like the ratios were perfect. It was garnished with a lime, and it had a salt rim. I, I love Patron. It's also very dangerous in this cocktail because you had the citrus flavors. You had that fresh lime. You had citron. It's orange liqueur. It's Yeah, it's their version of a Cointreau Mm -hmm. or what's the other orange liqueur that's often used in... Triple sec. Triple sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's their version of triple sec. And you could have just... There was a note on the menu that you could have substituted out the Patron Silver for your own favorite tequila oh, okay but who who needs now you don't typically see people making mixed drinks with patron ha huh. typically that's a, that a patron silver is usually one that it's a for, shot it's a shot or even a sipping tequila mm-hmm. and that you see plenty of yeah but so it was interesting for them to choose to make a drink out of it it just was so great. The citrus flavors and it, it was not tequila. When you take a shot of tequila, if you're shooting, mm-hmm. then you have a dryness and maybe some burning in your throat sometimes. This was just, it highlighted the citrus. So it was super dangerous. So no burn. <laughs> no burn. And the salt complemented the citrus and the sweetness of the agave. And it's interesting that you described it as almost a marshmallow type mm-hmm. flavor. It just, it added sweetness, not too much though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm a huge agave nectar fan. You mm-hmm. can get it in light to dark. And the darker it is, the more of those kind of marshmallowy notes Mm. that you get from it. But it was a great margarita. I, you should pace yourself because it could sneak up on you if you had more than one. I just had one. It was delightful. It was delicious. It was, I would do it again in a heartbeat, but I do want to try more of their drink menu. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because Um, these two kind of set it up. And I think that, Again, you're going to a Mexican restaurant or Tex-Mex and they have a margarita on the menu. That's a really good barometer for what Mm. you might get. The fact that they hit it out of the park with both of ours and you couldn't get two drinks that are really more different than one another. True. In in presentation or in flavor profile. I mean, the only similarity they had was the size of the glass they came in. And mine had some tequila as an ingredient, but... Mm -hmm. Flavor profile, nothing like yours at all. Yeah. Would you go there again? 100%.
110%. There you go. Get it right. Get it right. Sorry. (laughs) It was... It was delightful. Claudia was amazing. The whole entire experience was <sighs> delicious. It really was. We are going to have links in the show notes, of course, to Thanks, the Mike and Andy. Burrito Gallery. Yes, Mike and Andy of the Bouncy Hunters. Thank you guys so much. Mm. Guys, next week, we are heading back to my hometown, going home to Tampa. <sighs> We're, and it's going to be a weekend of firsts. It, yeah, we've never done an 8K. 8K is a brand new distance. So no matter how good or bad we do, we're PRing. That's true. <laughs> because we've never done that distance before. And of course, this is our return the first year after the pandemic to the Gasparilla Distance Classic. So happy it's back. And not only are we looking forward to the race being back, we're also looking forward to exploring and indulging the food and beverage scene in my hometown of Tampa, Florida. So many great flavors to have in that area. But uh, until that time, if you guys would do us a favor. We really, really, really need ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts or on iTunes if you have a PC. The recency of those reviews really helps us get discovered and we need some updated ones. So if you guys yeah. would take just a couple of minutes, head over there, leave us a five-star rating and review. If we've earned five, five, stars, five stars, I'm just sneaking in there. Okay. You know, but uh, we would so greatly appreciate that. That helps us get discovered. And our goal is to grow the Runcation Nation and bring together foodies and runners and people who love travel and experiencing the country all together through the podcast and Mm. we want them to be able to find us when they're looking for shows that pique their interest and great groups of people to hang out with that too. So guys, thank you so much for listening, for joining us on your long run, your commute to work around the house, wherever you are. I'm your host, Amy, and I'm your co-host, Dana. Stay safe and well, and we will accomplish, explore and indulge with you really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge right along with us. We'll talk to you next time.